Mesenteric ischemia and ischemic colitis are both conditions that lead to ischemia to the bowel. They are often incorrectly confused as the same condition. Let's discuss the basics of mesenteric ischemia and ischemic colitis and the key differentiating features. So we are going to compare both mesenteric ischemia and ischemic colitis. Let's start off by discussing mesenteric ischemia. Mesenteric ischemia affects the small bowel, so it is characterized by a reduction in blood flow to the small bowel. This reduction in blood flow can occur acutely or it can be a chronic problem. So mesenteric ischemia can be divided into acute mesenteric ischemia or chronic mesenteric ischemia. The small bowel has a very rich blood supply and it is very vulnerable to ischemic injury. In mesenteric ischemia, there is insufficient perfusion to the small bowel and this will lead to reduced oxygen and nutrient delivery to the cells of the bowel and this will lead to ischemia to the bowel. This ischemia can eventually progress to inflammation of the bowel and this can progress to necrosis of the bowel. If this necrosis occurs through all layers of the bowel, so it occurs transmurally, then there is a high risk of the patient developing bowel perforation, which is a very fatal complication that patients with mesenteric ischemia can develop. A perforated bowel can be very fatal for the patient, and typically patients present with signs of peritonism. One of the key complications to remember with a perforated bowel is that there is a high risk of the patient developing abdominal sepsis, which can be very fatal for the patient. So the key thing to remember about mesenteric ischemia is that it has a risk of causing bowel perforation, which can be fatal for the patient, for example, by causing sepsis. This is why mesenteric ischemia is always a very important differential to consider when evaluating a patient with an acute abdomen. The risk of these complications is much higher for acute mesenteric ischemia compared to chronic mesenteric ischemia because with acute mesenteric ischemia there is a very sudden drop in perfusion to the small bowel and this has a much higher risk of progressing to bowel perforation. Let's now talk through some of the key differences between acute mesenteric ischemia and chronic mesenteric ischemia. In acute mesenteric ischemia, the symptoms generally develop very suddenly so patients develop very sudden onset abdominal pain. Because the pain is very sudden onset, it should make sense that the cause of acute mesenteric ischemia is usually due to an embolism or a thrombus. So again, remember, the major cause of acute mesenteric ischemia is an embolism occluding the arteries supplying the small bowel. In terms of chronic mesenteric ischemia, compared to acute mesenteric ischemia, the symptoms in chronic mesenteric ischemia generally appear much more insidiously, so patients have a much more gradual onset. Chronic mesenteric ischemia usually occurs because of atherosclerosis of the vasculature supplying the small bowel. Let's focus on acute mesenteric ischemia first, and then we will discuss chronic mesenteric ischemia. As the major cause of acute mesenteric ischemia is an embolism, one of the major risk factors for acute mesenteric ischemia is atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation increases the risk of thrombi being formed because atrial fibrillation leads to stasis of blood inside the atria and the stasis of blood can lead to thrombi being formed and these thrombi can embolize to different areas of the body. As we discussed in the video on the Chadzva score, we discussed how atrial fibrillation can lead to an ischemic stroke because the thrombi can embolize to the arteries supplying the brain. But similarly, the thrombi can also embolize to the artery supplying the small bowel and this can lead to acute mesenteric ischemia. So remember, the major risk factor for acute mesenteric ischemia is atrial fibrillation. In terms of the other risk factors for acute mesenteric ischemia, patients who have many atherosclerosis risk factors such as smoking, diabetes, hypertension, these patients also have a higher risk of developing acute mesenteric ischemia Patients who have cardiac disorders which increase the risk of thrombi and emboli being formed, such as valvular heart diseases and infective endocarditis. Patients who are in hypercoagulable states also have a higher risk of developing acute mesenteric ischemia. Hypercoagulable states also includes malignancy. So patients who have an underlying malignancy also have a higher risk of developing acute mesenteric ischemia. In terms of the clinical features of acute mesenteric ischemia, Patients will typically present with severe, sudden abdominal pain. And the key thing to remember about this abdominal pain 
is that this pain is disproportionate to clinical findings. So often when you assess the patient, the examination findings will be unremarkable. Remember, when assessing any patient with acute abdominal pain, if the pain started very suddenly and it is very severe, it is highly suggestive that the cause of the pain is due to a vascular problem such as acute mesenteric ischemia. So remember, for any patient presenting with severe sudden onset abdominal pain, it's very important to include acute mesenteric ischemia in your differential diagnosis. Patients with acute mesenteric ischemia will typically also present with bloody diarrhea. And as we discussed earlier, there is a high risk of bowel perforation with acute mesenteric ischemia, particularly with acute mesenteric ischemia due to an embolism. So there can be signs of shock such as tachycardia, hypotension, dehydration, and low urine output. So it is a very important diagnosis not to miss. In terms of the investigations for acute mesenteric ischemia, there are some key findings on blood tests that can help point towards the diagnosis of acute mesenteric ischemia. One of the key findings is an increase in lactate levels. Because there is ischemia to the bowel, this will lead to the bowel start to rely on anaerobic respiration to produce ATP, and this will increase the levels of lactate. The increase in lactate levels can be picked up very quickly on a venous blood gas or an arterial blood gas. So this increase in lactate is highly suggestive of ischemia to the bowel. Another finding on blood tests is an increase in white blood cells. And finally, because of the increase in lactate, this can lead to a metabolic acidosis because the lactate can cause a lactic acidosis. Once there is a clinical suspicion for acute mesenteric ischemia, the gold standard investigation to confirm acute mesenteric ischemia is CT angiography. And finally, in terms of the management of acute mesenteric ischemia, it is very important to perform a full A2E assessment of the patient and carry out the sepsis 6 as appropriate because of the risk of bowel perforation and subsequent abdominal sepsis. In terms of the definitive management of acute mesenteric ischemia, endovascular treatment can be done and this can help to remove the embolism or the thrombus. So that's a summary of acute mesenteric ischemia. Just a high yield fact to remember about acute mesenteric ischemia is that it is usually the superior mesenteric artery that is occluded in acute mesenteric ischemia. So now, let's talk about chronic mesenteric ischemia. And like we said earlier, chronic mesenteric ischemia generally occurs because of atherosclerosis of the vasculature supplying the small bowel. So in terms of the risk factors for chronic mesenteric ischemia, it should make sense that atherosclerosis risk factors will increase the risk of chronic mesenteric ischemia. So things like smoking, diabetes, and hypertension will all increase the risk of the patient developing chronic mesenteric ischemia. Age is also a risk factor, as most patients with chronic mesenteric ischemia are quite elderly, and it generally occurs in patients above the age of 60. In terms of the clinical features of chronic mesenteric ischemia, chronic mesenteric ischemia is often referred to as abdominal angina. This is because chronic mesenteric ischemia leads to postprandial epigastric pain. So similar to stable angina, which refers to chest pain that occurs on exertion, chronic mesenteric ischemia refers to epigastric pain that usually occurs after eating meals. And this is because after eating meals, there is an increased metabolic demand from the bowel and there is not enough blood supply to meet that metabolic demand. And this will lead to epigastric pain. This pain is usually quite dull. Because it leads to pain after eating, this can lead to patients becoming scared of eating and this can lead to a reduced appetite because of this fear. This reduced appetite can lead to weight loss. So those are the clinical features of chronic mesenteric ischemia. In terms of the investigations for chronic mesenteric ischemia, investigations are generally non-specific compared to acute mesenteric ischemia. The gold standard investigation to confirm chronic mesenteric ischemia is also CT angiography. In terms of the management of chronic mesenteric ischemia, the management of chronic mesenteric ischemia heavily revolves around optimizing the patient's risk factors. So optimizing the risk factors that are increasing the risk of the patient developing atherosclerosis. So this can include stopping smoking, optimizing their diabetic control, getting better control of their hypertension. And there are many interventions to help the patient with this. For patients who are having very severe symptoms, and are unable to optimize their risk factors to help control their symptoms, revascularization can be done, and this can involve stenting. 
Now that we've discussed mesenteric ischemia, let's now discuss ischemic colitis. One of the key differences between mesenteric ischemia and ischemic colitis is that ischemic colitis affects the large bowel, which is different compared to mesenteric ischemia. Ischemic colitis usually presents acutely, but it can be very variable. Ischemic colitis is characterized by hypoperfusion to the large bowel. Now, the large bowel has a very rich blood supply, similar to the small bowel, but there are areas of the large bowel which are called watershed areas. The watershed areas of the bowel includes the splenic flexure and the rectosigmoid junction. The watershed areas are areas of the bowel which receive dual blood supply, but this dual blood supply refers to very distal branches of both the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery. So they generally receive less blood supply compared to the rest of the bowel. So the watershed areas are particularly vulnerable to becoming ischemic. So as ischemic colitis is characterized by hyperperfusion of the large bowel, it typically affects the watershed areas first, such as the splenic flexure. This hypoperfusion can lead to ischemia to the bowel. And just like in mesenteric ischemia, this ischemia can lead to inflammation and then necrosis of the bowel. And if this necrosis extends through the full thickness of the large bowel, this can lead to bowel perforation, which, as we said earlier, can be very fatal. And as we said earlier, one of the major risks of bowel perforation is sepsis. So ischemic colitis can also lead to bowel perforation. So it is also a diagnosis not to miss, just like acute mesenteric ischemia. In terms of the risk factors for ischemic colitis, anything which causes hypotension and hypovolemia can also lead to ischemic colitis. This often occurs in patients who are in shock and they can have severe hypertension or severe hypovolemia, which can lead to ischemic colitis. Usually in these situations, if the cause of the hypotension and the hypovolemia is resolved, the ischemic colitis will also resolve. Classically, patients who have had recent cardiovascular surgery are also at risk of developing ischemic colitis. A hypercoagulable state is also a risk factor for ischemic colitis. Large bowel obstruction can also lead to ischemic colitis because if there is bowel obstruction, this can lead to blood vessels getting compressed and this can lead to ischemia to the bowel. In terms of the clinical features of ischemic colitis, patients typically develop severe abdominal pain. Bloody diarrhea is also a common feature in ischemic colitis. And rarely, if there is prolonged ischemia, this can lead to bowel perforation. And in these situations, there will be signs of shock. But this is less common compared to acute mesenteric ischemia. In terms of the investigations for ischemic colitis, if the ischemia is severe, then there can be similar findings that are seen in acute mesenteric ischemia, such as an increase in lactate, increase in white blood cells, as well as a metabolic acidosis. Another finding that might be seen is thumbprinting on an abdominal x-ray. Thumbprinting is a radiological feature and it refers to being able to see the thickening of the mucosa of the bowel. The gold standard investigation to confirm ischemic colitis is colonoscopy, which is different compared to mesenteric ischemia. Finally, in terms of the management of ischemic colitis, it generally involves supportive care and resolving the cause of the hyperperfusion of the bowel. If the ischemia is severe, then surgery can be performed to manage the patient. So those are the key differences between mesenteric ischemia and ischemic colitis. To summarize what we have discussed, let's go through some example case scenarios. A 65-year-old woman presents to the emergency department with severe diffuse abdominal pain. She said she was cooking in the kitchen and then suddenly developed this stabbing abdominal pain. She has a past medical history of atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response. Abdominal examination was unremarkable. A venous blood gas shows a raised lactate. Now you can pause the video at this point and think about what the likely diagnosis is. The diagnosis here is acute mesenteric ischemia due to an embolus. There are a couple of key points that point towards this diagnosis. The sudden onset severe abdominal pain points towards a vascular cause of abdominal pain, such as acute mesenteric ischemia. The abdominal examination was unremarkable, but the patient still has very severe abdominal pain. The severe diffuse abdominal pain, which is disproportionate to clinical findings, is characteristic of acute mesenteric ischemia. The history of atrial fibrillation indicates that she is at a high risk of forming emboli. And finally, 
the raised lactate indicates ischemia to the bowel. So this is why the likely diagnosis here is acute mesenteric ischemia due to an embolus. Let's have a look at another case scenario. A 84 year old man presents to the GP with colicky abdominal pain. The pain started four months ago and is mainly located in the epigastric region. He has noticed that he has lost a considerable amount of weight and says he is afraid of eating because of this pain. He has a past medical history of peripheral arterial disease and he had an ischemic stroke six months ago. A venous blood gas shows a raised lactate. So again, you can pause the video at this point and have a think about what the likely diagnosis is. The likely diagnosis here is chronic mesenteric ischemia. There are a couple of things in the history that point towards this diagnosis. Chronic mesenteric ischemia typically affects people over the age of 60. This patient also has postprandial epigastric pain, which is one of the hallmarks of chronic mesenteric ischemia. The reduced appetite and subsequent weight loss are consistent with the likely diagnosis being chronic mesenteric ischemia. He also has risk factors for atherosclerosis as he has a past medical history of peripheral arterial disease and he recently had an ischemic stroke. The raised lactate also suggests ischemia to the bowel. So this is why the likely diagnosis here is chronic mesenteric ischemia. A 68 year old woman presents to the emergency department with bloody diarrhea. She had noticed some abdominal pain before she experienced the bloody diarrhea. The pain was dull and was in the left iliac fossa. She had an endovascular aortic aneurysm repair last week. Now again, take a minute to think about what the likely diagnosis is here. The likely diagnosis here is ischemic colitis. Again, there are a couple of things that point towards this diagnosis. Bloody diarrhea is one of the hallmarks of ischemic colitis and dull abdominal pain is also a clinical feature of ischemic colitis. The recent cardiovascular surgery is also a risk factor for ischemic colitis. And that is a summary of mesenteric ischemia and ischemic colitis.